Hello, I'm Kyle Stallings. This is March 15th, 2023. We're here in the Tice House of the Tomball Museum Center, and we're here visiting with Mr. John McShann today. This is part of the museum's oral history project, recording the reflections of Tomball residents that have shaped and formed the history of this great town in Northwest Harris County. You can view this video and others at our YouTube channel, at Tomball Museum. John, it's nice to have you here with us today. We wanted to follow up with, with your memories on top of, we just uh, heard a lot of the memories of Butch Tice, and we heard how his ancestor, Johann Heinrich Tice and Katharina came over around 1846, and then his son, Jacob Tice Sr. So tell me about Henry's Civil War time. All right. Henry... There is rumor that he was enlisted, but we have reason to believe that he didn't enlist in the war. He was conscripted into the war. And although it is evidence that his brother Jacob and Henry were both, I think probably Jacob was the one that was enlisted. And I believe that he was the one that probably stayed in the Texas area and probably helped the Confederate with the making of the wagon wheels. Whereas Henry was sent on and he actually was sent to the firing lines and actually experienced because rumor has it that he was captured by the Union forces over in Louisiana. After he was captured, there's bits and pieces that we were able to determine that he was transferred by wagon, by rail, and ended up in Elmira, New York, in, in their prison camp there. From what we have found out, and there is books on the Elmira prison camp, that they have discovered that it was deplorable conditions. There was sickness. Uh, you had southern boys that were wound up there that were not used to the weather. So you had snow to deal with that they had probably never seen before. Um, no food. It was rumored that all they had to eat every day was a little bread, water, and maybe a potato. So many people had, had passed in that prison camp that we also know that it was known by the prisoners, if we stay here, we're all going to die. And that was the whole outlook that they had. So with that in mind, we believe that Henry decided that if I'm going to be here, if I'm going to starve to death, and this is my place of death, I want to risk it, and I want to get out of here. I want to go home. You, because you've got to understand, these people came from Germany, never learned to speak any English. They only spoke German. And here they were thrown into a war where everybody around them spoke English. He couldn't communicate with anybody. So and the only people that he knew he could communicate with was back home. So he had a, a burning desire to, uh, I feel like, to make it back home. But in those days... Nobody knew where New York was. Nobody knew where Rose Hill, Texas was. How he managed to get home, we do not know this day. But one thing we do know that while he was there, it was a textile factory, and they made these prisoners sew, weave, whatever their, their methods was, but they produced blankets for the Union Army. And in so doing... When he did escape and made his way home, the only thing he had in his possession was one of these blankets. And on the blanket, it is in, in, uh, stitched in there that the blanket was, it was, I don't know if they named it, if it was a style of blanket, but it says America's Freedom. And that's stitched on the blanket. And to this day, that blanket was passed down, wound up in my mother's hands, 
and is still in our family today. And um, so we have that. But I, I go back to how important it was, I guess, in the will to live. It has been determined that he escaped the prison. How he did this, we're not sure. But some of the methods of escape that we have since found out, they also, there was a, we don't know if it was involved with the prison that was where these, where he was at the time. But in that particular area, they constructed a lot of the uh, the coffins for the uh, soldiers that didn't make it. There were wooden coffins, and they had a rail station there that was close by. And in the book that I have read, that those wooden coffins would be stacked on the rail cars, and they would be shipped south for their bodies to be placed in, and then I guess they directed to wherever they're they were to be buried. But it was interesting in one of the ways that some of the prisoners did escape. They would somehow become friends with the people that worked for the rail yard. And when they wanted to escape, they would slip down there, tell him they would sneak into these wooden coffins and have somebody nail the lid on it. And that's how they made their way out of the prison was in a wooden coffin. And to where they went, who knows where, but they left Elmira, which was also called and known as Helmira because of the conditions and the situations that they were in. There were other ways that they said, you know, that in some of the attempts to escape, uh, that was probably the most popular one. Uh, some of them got to know some of the people, you know, that did live around there, and, and they helped them uh, get out. But the most popular one, and the one that they referenced in that most people did, um, was in the coffins. Do you know how he got back to this area? No, I do not. Uh, there was, there's no evidence, and, and understand that when he did make it back here, or during his trip, he only could speak German. So the only communications he would have as to where he was at any given time, which was north, which was south, uh, you know, where I'm headed, he could only communicate with other individuals that spoke German. So I feel like he was rather limited, and really all he had to go on was if he ran into someone that could communicate with him that he could learn possibly where he was and where he was headed. Uh, we feel like also what we've learned from looking at some of the history, he, was, he sold the property in, in the Klein area and moved to Rose Hill in the, around 1862. We knew that he had had three wives during his lifespan, and he had 14 children. Well, around 1862, when you look at all the births of his children, there was basically one a year. And when it 1862 came, I don't recall, there could have been one born in 62, but there was none born for, there was a seven-year span where there were records that no children were born. So we think that he was probably in the war, fighting for the Confederate Army, imprisoned, and by the time he made it back, that encompassed seven years. Because the eighth year, or in 1869, 1869, to 1870, he started having children again, and that's recorded. So there was a seven-year span there that we feel like that was all part of that time that he spent. So who, who was your mother? 
My mother was Audrey Tice, a descendant of Johnny Tice, descendant of my great grandpa, which was Heinrich or Henry. And did she live in this house? She was born in this house, in this room that we sit, in February of 1935. And one of the things that she did tell me that before she passed was that this, the, the, the Tices being the closest house to Salem Church at the time, they were housing Teacher Bisher. And this was his room, but because she was to be born in cold weather, wintertime, he moved out down the hall and into one of these other bedrooms, which was a spare bedroom at the time, allowing her to be born in this room. It was warmer. It was, you know, it had the heater. And uh, so th I thought that was interesting. And then because she was born, uh, the last Tice to be born in this house, uh, of course, and that being the 19 mid 30s, they did some remodeling on this house at that time. And although it was originally set up that you had to leave the, the bedroom here, walk to the dog run, go to the front porch, walk down the porch to get to the kitchen, they did remodel, and right behind me, they had cut a doorway so that her mom, being Lydia, and uh, my mother could go from warm bedroom to the kitchen through this door without having to walk out outside. And so I thought that was kind of unique that that they they even remodeled homes to accommodate, you know, even back in those days. So How do you spell Bisher? Bisher was B-U-E-S-C-H-E-R. And now there's a Bisher Road. In there is a Bisher Road. That is his descendants that live at the dead end of Bisher Road. And that sounds like it's just a little west of where this house was sitting, right? That's correct. Right. Yes. Do you know if they their family was there before he started teaching? or did, No. Obviously. No, the, that was all his descendants okay. that, uh, that would, lived there, yes. All right. And who was your dad? My dad was J.P. McShann. And what did your dad do in the area? When dad, well, let me back up. His, how he came to Tomball, his, his parents were, or his dad was involved in the oil field business, as many other people in, in those era, around the, the 1930s, 1940s. And he had moved from time to time. I think they were in working for an oil field down around Friendswood. They moved up to the Cleveland area, was working in some of the oil that was discovered there, and then wound up here in the Tomball area when they discovered oil. And Dad lived in the uh, Humble Camp, as well as once Mom moved out of this house and uh, her dad had passed. Her mom remarried to A. Blusk, and he was also living in the humble camp at that time. And that's how mom and dad met. They had lived just down the street from one another, and they met in, in their high school years. And then, of course, they were high school sweethearts, and then later on, they both got married. Do you know if they were the upper camp or the lower camp? That I don't know. Uh, I wish I did. I wish I had paid more attention mm -hmm. to their stories, but I, I don't know. Yeah. And um, your grandmother, what was... Was Lydia Rudel, yeah. which was born and raised right there on that Rudel land there at the intersection of Hicks and what today is Hicks and 249. Do you know if there's any Rudels still in the area? Oh yes, there's there's a lot of them. Great. And how about your grandfather? What was his name? 
My grandfather that married Lydia was A. Blusk. He was from Louisiana. And he had moved in and came to looking for work and wound up here in the Tomball area and worked for, at that time, Humble Oil and Refining. So mm -hmm. that's how they belong there. And it was it's interesting because when Mom and, and uh, my grandma left this house that's set in Rose Hill, even I lived in the Humble Camp as back I can faintly remember probably it was like three, four, five year old. My grandpa or my step grandpa was a, an avid hunter and fisherman. And I can remember being from Louisiana. He was always bringing home fish from either around here. They would go to the coast and you know, back in those days, they didn't have any limits of fish and things like that, like the laws that we do nowadays. And it was just tremendous. And at an early age, I decided, you know, and that's, this was neat. And that's what I decided that, you know, how I wanted to grow up. And when he discovered that, everywhere he went, and I'll never forget, he had a 1949 Ford pickup. And it was the old steel console, steel dashboard. I mean, it was. A, but I rode in that truck many a times with him, and we would go fishing. He had a little old wooden boat, and probably all of that influenced a lot uh, in my life, as well as as he was an influence in my life. And we. Briefly touch Henry's son there in the Tomball area. Who was that? There's an, another generation in there. That was Johnny Tice. Johnny Tice. Which was mom's dad. Yeah. And was married to my grandma, Lydia Rudel at that time. But he died early. Yes. And I found this in an old cookbook from Tomball. Can you hold that up for the camera? That Who was that by? This was some information that my mom had prepared. Uh, I think it, it was for the museum, but if I remember correctly, she also did maybe this as it was an article in the Houston Chronicle right. at that time. And they were looking and had discovered that all the Tice and all the number of Tice descendants that were living in this area and had asked her for just a brief history of her lineage and, and so. And that was the write-up that she had given the paper. But also there's a, a recipe on the bottom of it. I'm not quite sure how the recipe tied in to the family lineage, but I do know that the recipe is for chicken and dumplings, and that was probably one of the prominent meals that I, growing up, I remembered quite often in having that meal uh, probably once a week. And uh, But she and my grandma were also very good cooks, and I know they had a lot to do when uh, they were both going to Salem Lutheran Church and they were very prominent members there. They also helped the, I think it was the Ladies' Aid, I remember, was an organization that they had in Salem. They were both members. And every year, I think they would edit uh, the, the recipe books that they had. And the church would put out these recipe books from all members that submitted recipes. And I remember to this day, and I still have in my possession uh, some of these old recipe books. And it's kind of interesting. You look there, there, and you find you find your mom had you know written some, and your grandmother had written some, and yeah, uh, it's just unfortunate. It would have been interesting had you found some of the older Tices, and I'm sure they had their own recipes. Mm -hmm. You don't find them, but I suspect some of the recipes that these two ladies had were, were passed down through the years.
Did you hear any more stories about this house? Not really. I mean, Mom, for years, you know, she she would tell me that uh, she was born in a house up in the Rose Hill. It was down the road, you know, from Salem Church. And when we were growing up, we would drive by there, and she said, this is the land, you know, that the house was on. Um, you could see the house from the road. But, I, you know, I'll, I didn't ask any questions as to why we couldn't go see the house, why nothing. I just listened to her. And, and then it was, and I'm trying to think what year, but about the last 10 to 15 years of their life, both her and dad decided we lived in the Tomball area. We lived in the Rudel area. We lived behind Klein Supermarket on Rudel Drive, which was some of the land that my grandma had inherited. And uh, dad and mom had built there and had lived there about 25 years. And I'll never will forget, mom and dad would always tell me that, yeah, we built this house. It was a three-bedroom, typical home uh, in the day. And this was all back in probably the 60s that this house was built. And they would always tell me that they built it for uh, about $10,000. And the other thing that, that mom was, was proud of, and, and Butch had mentioned it before, she said all the lumber had come out of and from Harris County and was all milled at the Cleb and Tice lumber yard, which was down in the spring Klein area. Mm -hmm. uh, but then once they decided that they wanted, they were time to move, they wanted to retire somewhere. And where they wound up and bought, they bought 10 acres off of Bisher Road. And I often ask her, you know, and it didn't dawn on me at the time, but the, at the land, the property that she had bought, or she and dad bought, she built the house and it faced east. She could sit in the living room and look across the fence at the land where this house was and where she grew up. And she said, this is as close that, as I can get to it. Mm -hmm. To where she grew up so she was fond of, of this house and, and growing up in the area and that's where for the last 15 years of their life they had settled and uh, built a new home and lived there till both their deaths. Do you have any memories of you want to share of growing up around the Tomball area? Just growing up, I remember a lot of things and some of the highlights, and, and this was living here in Tomball, uh, I do recall, you know, on, on Friday and Saturday nights is not much that I was in, I remember and memorable in my elementary and junior high years, but in my high school years. Uh, just the friends that we had. And I'll never forget Friday and Saturday nights, we would go into town and it was always a big thing. You would meet people from the Klein area. You would meet people from Spring. They would come to Tomball. And the big thing back in my days was just, if you had a car, fine. If you didn't, you got with somebody that did one. And all they did was drive from 249 to the railroad track, back and forth, turn around. And it was just cruising Main Street. That was a big deal. And uh, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget uh, as, as a high school, we would go on Friday nights. There was a local rodeo that existed in Cyprus that we would always go to. And, and then as I got a little bit older and, and started dating, you know, it, this being a country area, everybody grew up country. And a lot of the things, everybody would go on Saturday nights, go to the dance at Ten Hall. That was a very popular place. 
and and some of the memories when you would go to the dance, when you'd leave the dance. As kids, you're always hungry. We would go from there to the truck stop on 45 over in spring and always eat a chicken fried steak. <laughs> you know, and this would be midnight, one o'clock, and then after that we'd go home. Mm -hmm. I also remember during that time, because my kids, I had told that story to my kids one time, and they said, Dad, how can you afford it when gas is so expensive? And I said, well, when I graduated high school, gasoline was 19 cents a gallon. So it, you could fill up on, you know, everybody pooled together and throw in a dollar, and you'd get $5 worth of gas, and, man, that would last probably two nights worth. Mm. So... But I, I never really had not one memory. There were just a lot of small memories, mm -hmm. you know, but that was. Well, we appreciate you sharing that about your mother and the, the Tice history and the Lusk history. Uh, we appreciate it, John. I appreciate you bringing Bush Tice in today and appreciate you sitting for us for a second interview. Thank you for your time. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.